So good morning everybody, you find me at the complete opposite end of the country to where you saw me last time. I've actually come all the way from the Outer Hebrides where I've done my last few videos to East Anglia and I've come to a place that's world famous. This is Southwold Pier and um, it's a place that's really well and truly photographed but to be fair I've actually not seen that many YouTube videos on it so I thought we'd give it a shot this morning and try and capture a sunrise. Now at the moment in time it's quarter to five in the morning and sunrise is at half past five, actually no sunrise is at twenty past five, it's the fifth of May, it's about twenty past five, something like that. So I've got a little bit of time to get down to the beach and get ready for my shoot. My plan is to shoot the pier with a sort of panoramic if I can. Now I know that I'm criticised for being um, troubled by the quality of the light and the quality of the photographs but this morning, I'm afraid, is no exception. I just arrived here about five minutes ago, and if you look, typically again, the light is looking a little bit dodgy, to say the least, but I'm gonna try and stay as optimistic as I possibly can, get down there, set up, and wait and see what happens. So my plan has gone a little bit haywire, and I'll show you why. I've come onto the beach, and the, the, the image that I had in mind was to use these, this wooden structure that leads down onto the sands. This was going to be, this, this little group of posts here was going to be my, my immediate foreground, my stopper on the right hand side. And the plan was to use the wooden structure as it went down towards the water's edge. And it sort of leads your eye and sort of ends in a bit of a triangle um, which mimics the pier on the left hand side so they both go to to, together to form a point at the end. Now I, I don't know this beach so well that I know where the tide's going to be at any given time. I knew it was going to be a low tide today and I certainly don't want a high tide because this beach is completely covered at high tide but I thought it might have been further up than it actually is. Now you could say well why don't you come down further towards the water's edge and that's fine but like I said, I wanted to shoot a panoramic, really. And the problem with coming down here is, one, I haven't got much of the structure left, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really pull you in the same. And in order to get the angle right, the structure is, is more straight than a diagonal, and that doesn't work for me. But the other thing is, um, from a panoramic point of view, I'm gonna have real difficulties stitching the movement of the water from, from shot to shot as they move across because each wave is very very different what i planned to do up there was to sort of omit the immediate foreground of the waves so you wouldn't see that but if i was to try and get something down here i've really got to use as much of the foreground as possible in order to get the post in because there's not much left of them so i'm struggling a little bit at the moment if i'm honest the light equally isn't happening as yet that bit of colour that was in the in the sky that was just catching the edge of the clouds up at the top there um, which is immediately above me has started to get a little bit stronger but as yet i have still got to find a composition and it's coming light I don't know if you can see that arc of arc of cloud it's, uh, the colour's not really picking up on this camera but there's a little bit of colour just catching it's quite nice so I've, what I've done, I've come to the other side of the pier and at the other side of the pier there's these rocks that go out into the water. I really didn't want to shoot those this morning. I just feel they're a bit obvious, but I'm running out of time. And actually that arc of cloud actually really lends itself to being at this side. So I'm gonna to have to look at it, I think. So I've shifted my position about seven times. I'm really not getting what I wanted. The light's still quite nice and subtle, but it's not got that lovely glorious color that I really wanted. At the moment, I've got the camera set up in those rocks as the foreground. It's really not what I wanted to do. I've done it so many times that, but I've got limited options with the tide where it is. Um, I think it might be coming in. It's just whizzed past my legs and it's swamping my tripod. But uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna crack on. I'm gonna get something. Um, it seems such a shame to come all the way down here at, to get out of bed at half past four in the morning and get nothing so 
We've got the camera on a nice composition at least. Let's do that. So we're actually starting to get some nice side lighting. Quickly show you that. You can just about see the oranges in the sky there. And that's helping to just light the windows up on the pier. I've got the image lined up. I'm on F16, but I am going to focus stack that, this, this shot. These, these rocks are really quite close. Um, so I've focused on the, the rock on the real extreme right hand side. I've taken the first shot with my hand in front of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the water to come in as it is doing now. So that's the first shot taken. That's that one done. Um, I just hope that between these two shots that these waves don't come in and destabilise my tripod. So second shot, focusing on the pier itself. It takes a bit of time to move these little focusing points around. The sun is just literally peeping over the horizon now. Taking a gamble here, I've not got my glasses on and I'm trying to focus as best I can, it's just not working. There we go. Nice, nice and sharp. So I'm just going to wait for that water to come in again so it mimics the first shot and then we could have a reasonably good shot. I don't know if you can see just again, just quickly, the sun is just literally peeping over that horizon there. It's quite exciting. I wasn't expecting any light and if I'm really honest, I thought the sun was going to rise over there, not over there. So <laughs> that just goes to show what happens when you don't know the area too well. So come on Tide, give me a little bit of foreground, foreground action. I'm going to pop this down so you can see, um, hopefully you can see. Level it up, pan it up a little bit, there we go. We've got some nice cloud coming in from the left hand side that's just creeping over the top of the pier. Probably wave just come in, it's not quite far enough to get the bottom of my frame. Quite tense moments when you're waiting. What I'm really trying to get is a wave just to cover this bottom right hand triangle here and, and get, get the action as the, the water is receding out just to get a little bit of of interest in the in the fluidity of the water not to have it too static currently the exposure time is a sixth of a second so it's not it's not very slow and I've no filters on I'm just relying heavily on the uh, on the dynamic range of the camera do you know what I'm going to take one as a banker because I'm concerned that whilst this light is so warm I'm not going to get the effect that I want which is the lovely warm glow. If worse comes to the worst, I can always sandwich a bit of water into that foreground. That's really not me, but um, sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Here we go. Here we go. didn't quite come in far enough on that right hand side. It's tense, very tense. Frustratingly I can't move the tripod to go further down because I've got that first shot, first shot taken. That's better. That'll do it. So I'm going to move the tripod now and I'm going to try and incorporate some of this lovely reflected light on the water for a second shot. So t two minutes ago everything got swamped. The bag which is down on the beach which I considered to be well in, in a safe zone. The tide came right up, you just got one of those waves that occasionally do that. They come right up, almost took the bag with it so I plunked the camera bag just on the rocks there behind me and I'm still trying to get this shot actually the light right now is pretty nice I have to say fifth of a second and I'm shooting the scene behind me the rocks I've moved slightly away from them and we got some lovely dark clouds just above the top of the pier 
I'll try my best to show you that. So I don't know whether you can see that just about, yeah, you can see that there. That's really quite a nice composition. And that little, little bit of thick cloud just above the left top of the pier really helps it. So I'm going to carry on. And I think I might just have something for my efforts this morning. I'm going to put you back down there, hopefully out of harm's way. And uh, try and do some commentary from a distance. I keep taking these glasses on and off. I'm trying to get to grips with some varifocals and I'm sure there'll be people out there that can relate to how difficult varifocals can be when you're not used to them. Like I've said before, just it's really crucial to get that water in the foreground um, and get it receding out to, to give it a bit more of a dynamic look to the image. But the problem is I haven't got any sand feet on the bottom of this tripod, so it, every time the tide comes in too far, it destabilizes the tripod. I just wish I could be a little bit higher up at the moment. The problem that I'm seeing through the through the back of the, the screen here is that there's no separation between where the rocks finish and the and the pier. I'd like to show some water in between the two, but I just can't get that. The tripod's at full extension, and even if I got it up, see that's the tripod now destabilized. Even if I got it, it up as high as it would go, there still wouldn't be enough water to really make a difference. So I've almost got to wait for the tripod to stop riddling its way down into the sand and then take the shots. It's only a fifth of a second, so it's quick enough to freeze, um, to freeze the, the, the scene and, and not show any movement that might be still settling in the sand probably do with a slightly longer exposure but um, a fifth of a second is certainly showing the streaking of the, of the foaming water as it goes out now that one wasn't enough the color temperature of the of the light now is becoming a little bit cool it's not as warm as it was a few moments ago and it changes so rapidly this is a good one it's not quite got to the tripod legs. We'll grab that. Grab another one now as it's going out. That's not too bad, but I've lost the light on the pier. The sun is now just tipping up into the clouds and that's where it all ends as far as I'm concerned. If you can see that just going up into that bank of cloud there and that for me will be the end of the session so I'm just finishing off after I finished that last section of images I thought I would carry on a little bit and try and get some some bankers just in case those images in the warmer light didn't work the light the color temperature at the moment as you can see is really quite cool the Sun has risen into that cloud and actually starting to come out the other side that come out at the top side of it now the shot that I wanted this morning was that panoramic and I, I didn't get it in terms of being able to stitch the images together um, as I said the composition over there just wasn't right for it I think I got something I'll put it on in just a second but I'm gonna leave it there I'm gonna head back and get some breakfast so as always um, if you've enjoyed the film please subscribe leave some comments below thumbs up is always good and share the videos even better um, so from a lovely dawn on the very south east coast of England, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.